Hi, I'm Rohan Savant and today we are going to go over a video where we will discuss configuring search on an ORS once Elasticsearch has been installed. There are four main steps in this process. The first one is installing ES node or a cluster. The second one is configuring ES in CMX server properties and CMX cleanse properties, enabling search processing on the process servers registering the ES node and cluster in the provisioning tool. Once you have installed Elasticsearch node or cluster, you will have to register this node with a particular ORS. Once the ES process becomes available, which means once you have started Elasticsearch.batch file or the shell script file to bring up the ES server, you will go under the infrastructure settings available in the provisioning tools. Here, you'll ensure that uh, you add an ES cluster. Once the ES cluster has been added, you'll add an ES node. This ES node should bear the same name as the ES node that you have provided in your Elasticsearch.yml file. The URL that you need to provide here is the HTTPS URL for the Elasticsearch server port, which is defaulted to 9200. You have to ensure that the Elasticsearch node and the HTTP URL, both of these are accessible. If you have more than one ES nodes, you have to register each and every node individually under the Elasticsearch cluster in provisioning tool. Once you do this, you have to save and publish your changes. After publishing your changes, you will have to go back into the hub console to the process server. Process servers act as clients for ES requests. No indexing is actually done on process servers. However, they act as a broker for all communication between data and Elasticsearch node or cluster. You will need to register at least one process server in each ORS as search enabled process server. Do not enable Zookeeper if Elasticsearch is used. And of course, you can decide to have more than one process server act as your brokers, which means act as search servers for your Elastic service. Remember that no real processing is done on process servers. However, all the batch requests and all the API calls will be routed through the process server you select as search enabled so that it connects to the ES service that's running in the background to process all these requests. At this stage, you go ahead and save these settings. The third thing that you need to do is go ahead and actually set up some elastic search enabled columns. We also call these as searchable columns or setting up the searchable CO config. Uh, we have a few fields uh, that we can uh, mark as searchable. So when, whenever you mark a typical field as searchable, you will get a bunch of different options. You can mark it as a suggester enabled field, which enables the type ahead search. Now, uh, as a recommendation, uh, we would suggest that uh, fields with sensitive data like SSN or some key uh, values should not be suggested enabled. You also have a sortable property. You need not use this property. You can select the language that has to be set for the data. This language will be used basically for indexing as well as for incoming requests. You can induce some fuzziness by selecting the fuzzy column. Depending on the business requirement, you can set a particular column as facet enabled or not. We also have a displayable property which you can choose to ignore at this point of time. These are some recommendations for search enabled columns. Number of searchable columns per business entity should not exceed 10 to 15. There is a hard limit of 50 columns, but we really recommend not going beyond 10 to 15 per business entity. 
the number of searchable columns per ORS. This number should ideally not exceed 80 to 100. The depth of searchable child columns up until the third or the fourth level. If you go beyond the third or the fourth level, we have seen uh, major performance issues and some unexpected errors during indexing. And the number of suggested columns per business entity should not exceed uh, typically one or two columns. Again, remember, uh, you have to ensure that these are not columns that hold sensitive data. While you're setting up Elasticsearch, you have some properties that you need to uh, remember. We have the cmx.ss.enable property, which basically acts as a master switch for any environment uh, and server to decide whether it should be search enabled or not. Starting MDM 10.3, we have introduced a new property, cmx.ss.engine. If this property is not present in your CMX server and CMX cleanse properties, you will have to add it manually and set it as ES. ES stands for Elasticsearch. Uh, this is a property which basically tells the environment which engine is it going to use, whether it's going to be Elasticsearch or Solar. We have a couple of new properties, cmx.ss.request.entities.number. This is the number of root entity records that will be indexed per batch block. ES.index.refresh interval. Uh, this basically defines the interval uh, between the time you add or update data and the time it takes for ES or Elasticsearch indexes to refresh. There is a new property that you need to add under your uh, Java process or basically in your hub server or your process server uh, under your JBoss uh, or WebSphere or whichever uh, app server you're using. Uh, this is a Java level property. So if there are any connection issues between app server and the Elasticsearch process, this value will set the timeout as to how long the app server should wait before getting a response. This property is in seconds, so it should be set up on the app server to 86400, which translates to 24 hours. Now why this property is important is to ensure that if you have long running load or indexing jobs, they do not lose connectivity with the Elasticsearch service. This has been our session. In this session, we went over what needs to be done after installing Elasticsearch service on your physical boxes what things need to be enabled on the ORS in provisioning tool and infrastructure settings to ensure your Elastic Search cluster is connected to a particular ORS. Thank you.